I'm smiling You know what you do I wake up shy From the original Saturday Night Live cast members, my favorite from the bunch was John Belushi. His talent just shined above the rest of them. Sure, you have Dan Aykroyd's rapid-fire delivery of products, Gilda Radner's great recurring characters of Roseanne, Rosanna, Dana, and Emily Latella, and Bill Murray's lounge singer, but Belushi could disappear into a character. His impressions of Joe Cocker and Marlon Brando were spot on, plus he could sing, dance, do backflips, and other wonderful physical comedy things, plus had great comic timing to, by playing to the camera. Hollywood beckoned, as with the rest of the original Not Ready for Primetime Players, and Belushi went on to star in some of the greatest comedies of that era. Animal House and the Blues Brothers are considered modern comedy classics, while Spielberg's 1941, even though it was considered a critical and commercial flop at the time of its release, has gained a cult following and has been compared to Stanley Kramer's 1963 comedy classic It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. However, there is one film in Belushi's small catalog that barely gets noticed, yet shows what Belushi could accomplish in a romantic lead, and is definitely my favorite of his films, 1981's Continental Divide. Continental Divide was notable for a few things. It was the first film to be co-produced by Steven Spielberg's Amblin Entertainment. It was directed by Michael Apted, who was fresh off of his success from the Loretto Lynn biopic Coal Miner's Daughter and would later go on to direct Gorillas in the Mist and Danelle and it was written by Lawrence Kasdan. Who's Lawrence Kasdan? He co-wrote The Empire Strikes Back, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Return of the Jedi and then he went on to write and direct Body Heat, The Big Chill, Silverado, The Accidental Tourist, and Grand Canyon. Plus he wrote The Bodyguard. Yeah, that's Lawrence Kasdan. I should slap you. The story for Continental Divide is a very simple love story. Belushi plays Ernie Sochak, a investigative reporter for the Chicago Sun-Times, who has been investigating a corrupt councilman who has ties to the mob. He's a little too successful with his exposés when a couple of crooked cops beat him up in a dark alley. Because of this, Sosak's boss assigns him to cover a story far away from Chicago. A human interest story about a woman who lives up in the Colorado Rockies and studies eagles named Nell Porter. Of course, Sosak is reluctant, but goes anyway. When Solchak arrives, Nell Porter is not at home, so instead of freezing to death, he takes shelter in Porter's house. Oh! Shit. You're in my house. I, uh... You uh, broke in. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to assume the best for now. At breakfast, Solchak tells Porter his true intentions. I'm a newspaper man. This is a story I've always prayed I'd do. Finally, my editor gave in. I guess I wore him down. What story? Story about what? You. <laughs> uh, did you ever think to ask if I wanted that? And did it never occur to you to ask permission? Of all the unmitigated, presumptuous gall! Oh, there's no call to use big words. Stuck up in the mountains with a grease monkey for a companion, Sochak makes the best of it, observing Nell's work and tries to adjust to mountain living. Soon, Porter has a change of heart with Sochak by letting him write the story on her, and they soon begin to fall in love. They go on a large expedition to see the progress of two baby eagles. On the way down, Sochak has an accident and breaks his back. Here we see true nature first aid in action. Let's 
it for the chef. <laughs> Thanks. When Sochak returns to Chicago, he's a changed man. However, he is depressed that his girlfriend is a thousand miles of, away and his writing suffers because of it. The undulating hillocks round and smooth and full and fertile, sloping globes curving gently deeply down to the... I mean, where do you suggest we print it? Penthouse? Then when one of his sources is mysteriously murdered, Sochak gets back into action exposing the crooked councilman for what he is and pinning the murderer on him. Then, Nell Porter just happens to come to Chicago to, for a talk on Eagles. Sochak decides to go. Yes, I was I reading that... I understand they have a dramatic way of making love. Oh, shit. Uh, mating. Mating, right. They rekindle their relationship only to know that they must once again go their separate ways. There you go again. I'm leaving tomorrow. There's a 10 o'clock train. Train. Perfect. I love you. But why are you going to make us both miserable? <laughs> what else can we be? My life is in the Rockies. Yours is obviously here. But there's no answer. Sochak sees her off at a train station for their final goodbye. He leaves, but then... <laughs> as far as Cedar Rapids. So begins a long train ride to the Colorado Rockies once again, only this time revisiting old memories and creating some new ones. When they get to their final stop, Sochek has a fantastic idea. Let's get married. Marry me. Be Mrs. Suchak. Come on. But you won't stay here. I can't go with you. I don't care. What? I don't care. Continental Divide is one of Belushi's lesser known films, which I feel is a crime. It's a sweet love story and actually shows Belushi in a different light. He was no longer considered as a wild and crazy slob like an animal house, but more of a romantic lead. It set up what was to come for so many other original not ready for primetime players like Bill Murray in Lost in Translation and Broken Flowers, Dan Aykroyd in Driving Miss Daisy and Chaplin, and yes, even Chevy Chase in Memoirs of an Invisible Man. Unfortunately, the chance to see Belushi try more romantic or serious roles was never fulfilled because Belushi died six months after this movie was released. And it was a great loss to the world of comedy. I'm Zach Scott, and I'll see you on the next Lazy Dust Memories. Better lay off those today. Every day, for 13 years, some smart ass has been trying to tell me to quit. <laughs>